Redis is an open source in-memory data structure store which can not only be used as a cache or a message broker but also as a backend database. Besides being a blazing fast in-memory database, it also persists data on disk and provides you full control of its persistence behavior. In this video, we will see how to use Redis as a backend database for our Spring Boot app. We will perform CRUD or create, retrieve, update and delete operations against it. We will also see the persistence settings and how to change them. I already have a Redis server running on my machine. If you want to know how to install it, please watch my video Installing Redis on Linux. Here I have Spring Tool Suite running which is a flavor of Eclipse. Let's click on File, New, Other and then expand Spring Boot and choose Spring Starter Project. Give it a name Redis Data. Let's leave the default setting of Maven Build using Java version 11. Click Next. For the frameworks, let's type Redis. Choose Spring Data Redis which also includes a driver. Also select Web. Click Next and then Finish. Let's expand the project. Open the pom.xml file. Here is Spring Boot Starter Data Redis and Spring Boot Starter Web Dependencies. Now expand the Java node. Go to our main class. Let's create a bean which returns Jedis Connection Factory, a powerful Redis client implementation. We return the connection factory to be available for Spring Boot to use. Next, for querying data, we create Redis template. This template has string key and an object value. We specify the template to use the Jedis connection factory we created earlier. We return the template. If we are not using the default host and port for Redis, we can specify our own in Jedis connection factory bean. Let's create the factory, then using set host and set port, we can specify them and then return it. In our case, since we are using default local host and port 6379, we need not specify that. Let me comment this. Now let's right click on the package and choose new package. Give it a name com.example.demo.model. Next right click on it and choose new class. Give it a name item. We will be storing items in the Redis database. Let's annotate this class with at Redis hash. Redis hash marks objects as aggregate roots to be stored in the Redis hash. Let's create a few attributes for the item like the item ID, name, price, quantity. Let's right click, choose source, choose generate getters and setters, select all and then say generate. Let's have this class implement serializable since we want to persist it to disk. Now let's right click on the package and choose new package, give it a name com.example.demo.repository. Next, right click on it and choose new interface. Give it a name items repository. Let's annotate it with the at repository annotation. Let's have this interface extend CRUD repository for the item class having a string type ID. This is all you need and Spring Boot will generate CRUD methods for you for the items class. Now to test it, let's go to our main class. Let's auto wire this repository. Fix the imports. Let's have our class implement command line runner, which is a simple interface with a single run method. Spring Boot will call the run method automatically after the application context is loaded. So let's add the unimplemented methods. So here is the run method. Let me paste some code here and then I will explain it. Let's have the system out print line print saving. Next we create an item, assign it id id1, other attributes 
and then calling item repositories save method we save it to our redis database then we print saved let's run it by right clicking and choosing run as application we see the message saved so the item is saved to confirm let's get it let's create an item instance and call it by calling the item repositories method get by item id the repository implements all these methods for us which is so handy we specify the same id id1 let's print the item name let's run the project and we see the item name chair as expected let's try the update operation next for the item we got let's update the name as table the repository's save method will update the item if it already exists let's call it now let's get this item again from the redis database by calling ir.getItemById and doing a system out again run it and we get back the updated item name next let's delete this item by calling the repository's delete method let's get it again as item after delete and print the item name again from it let's expand the console and this time we get the error message no value present so our CRUD methods are working fine redis periodically takes snapshots of our database and so the data persists on disk and would survive application and database restart let's comment the update and delete portion of the code so that we can insert the item again and then confirm it is there with the fetch let's run it it was saved successfully let's stop the app now let's comment the piece where we are inserting and just have the fetch portion of the code run the app again and it fetched the item successfully from the disk if we go to the folders here under the redis folder we see the binary dump file dump.rdb where it keeps the data you can configure the snapshot frequency in the redis config file let's open it scroll down to the save section so as the documentation here says that set configure save as 901 if you want to save after 900 seconds if at least one key changed after 300 seconds if at least 10 keys changed after 60 seconds if at least 1000 keys changed you can change these values according to your requirements so if you make this save 5 1 it will save after 5 seconds if at least one entry changed and so on and you can disable saving completely if you comment the save lines so redis provides us controls to change the saving behavior as per our needs in this video we saw how we can configure our spring boot app to use redis as a backend database we saw how we can perform CRUD operations. Finally, we saw where we can go to customize the default save behavior. Thanks for watching.